This is problem 1.8-3. The upper deck of a football stadium is supported by braces, each of which transfers a load P equals 160 kips to the base of a column. A cap plate at the bottom of the brace distributes the load P to four flange plates of thickness one inch through a pin with diameter two inches to two gusset plates with so a thickness of 1.5 inches. Determine the following quantities, the average shear stress tau aver in the pin, the average bearing stress between the flange plates and the pin, um, that's gonna be sigma BF, and also between the gusset plates and the pin, which is sigma BG, and we are disregarding friction between the plates. So these pictures show how this is used in the stadium. So, right, so we have um, this whole structure supported by this beam right here. And right in this red circle is where uh, this little brace is located. And this kind of shows how we have um, this, which is called the cap plate, and it's connected to four phalange plates which are then connected to two gusset plates by these pins that go through. And so this right here is the most simplified picture that shows the problem we're working with. So we have our force at the top and at the bottom, which is split in two. And we have the two gusset plates, four flange plates, and the pins. And we are finding three values. Uh, the shear stress in the pins and the bearing stress between the flange and the pin and the gusset and the pin. And then we are given all these different dimensions. So let's go ahead and write those down. All right, so that's all the information we are given and the information we are going to calculate and we draw a single line before we start on the problem. So we're going to start with the shear stress. And this is going to be a force over an area since it's a stress. And we're given the force directly, which is capital P. And then we need to also calculate the shear area um, so since it's a shear stress, the area over which it's acting is going to be our shear area. And so P is what we're given, and A, subscript S, our shear area, this is going to be the cross-sectional area of our pin, and it is going to be acting between the flange plates and the gusset plates. So if you imagine the force is going to be pushing the flanges down. All right, so it's pressing down the cap plate, which is pressing down all four flanges. And then we have this force, which is going to be coming from the ground, pressing the gussets up. And so since the flange and the gussets are being pushed in different directions, our shear is going to be in between them right here. So we're going to have four places where that's acting. And so this is where our shear areas are. And since that's a cross section of the bolts, they are going to be circles. And so our shear area is going to be pi dp, which is the diameter of the bolt, squared over 4. So that's the area of one circle. And since we have four of them, I'm just going to multiply this by 4, which, of course, these cancel out. And so then we just have p over pi dp squared. And now we can plug in all of our values. 
And let's look at the units real quick. So kips is thousands of pounds. And so we have thousands of pounds over um, inches squared, which is the same as KSI, which is thousands of PSI. And PSI is pounds per uh, square inch. And so we can keep this in the number. This is the number that we get when we put this in our calculator and our units get converted into KSI. All right, so there is our value for the average shear stress in the pins. And now we can find the bearing stress between the pins and the flange. And so this is going to be a different area, but it's still going to be force per area. So let's write this real quick. P over A, and this is going to be a bearing area. But since we're finding two bearing stresses, we're going to have two different bearing areas. So we're going to give this an extra subscript F, which matches the one on our sigma. So let's figure out where this area is. So it's between the pin and the flanges. And so it's going to be this half cylinder here. where the flange is pressing down on the pin. But in reality, it's not the half cylinder because we actually use the projected area. So if we imagine our uh, flange here from an angle, and we have the pin coming through. And our flange has a thickness. Well, so we have the pin going through here, right? And it is going to be pressing down on the top part of this half cylinder but we project this onto a flat area. And so this is the, this little rectangle is the thickness of the flange, right? So it's the same length as this here. And also the diameter of the pin. So when this is projected, the diameter of the pin is the same length as this side of the rectangle. And so this becomes d times t, so that's the area of this little rectangle. And from the side view, that rectangle is right there. And just like before, we have four of them. So we're going to multiply this by four. Oh, and we have subscripts that go in here. So it's dp and tf because it's the thickness of the flange. And yeah, so now we can plug in our values. And the units work out the same as before. We have kips per square inch and so that turns into KSI and this is 20 KSI. All right and finally we have the bearing stress between the pin and the gussets and so instead of between the pin and the flange it's the pin and the gusset and so all of this right here still applies. It's just a different thickness because it's the gusset instead of the flange. And we only have two of them because there's only two gussets. And these are where the areas are acting. Um, actually, they'd be on the bottom 
because the gussets are pressing up from beneath the pittance. And so our math is going to be pretty similar. We're going to change our F to a G here. Um, this is the area between the pin and the gussets. And so that ends up changing the subscript on our T from an F to a G. And instead of having four, we're only going to have two of those areas. And now we just plug it in. And again, the units are the same. And this comes out to be 26.7 KSI. And that is our last answer. So we draw our double underline at the end of the problem. And that is it.